Welcome to the Divorce Survival Guide podcast, where we have open and honest conversations about co-parenting, separation, divorce, and the hardest question of all, should you stay or should you go? I'm Kate Anthony, your Divorce Survival Guide, and I'm here to help you navigate some of the roughest waters you've ever swum in and answer some of your toughest questions. I've been to hell and back, and now it's my mission in life to help you get to the other side of this process with your sanity and your heart intact. Welcome to the coronavirus edition of the Divorce Survival Guide podcast. <laughs> you all know I had to do it, right? Um, holy crap. Holy crap. I know this is probably, I, I don't know if this is the first thing or the last thing you guys want to hear about. Have you gotten 7,000 emails from companies that you just didn't even know that you were subscribed to with their coronavirus virus update? Coronavirus? virus? <laughs> That's where we're at, kids. That's where we're at. Who's homeschooling? Woohoo! <laughs> or pretending to. <laughs> oh my God. Um, you know, there was a wonderful post going around about like, just give yourselves a break. You know, all of a sudden, with all the pressures that we have, us moms, all the pressures that we put on ourselves <laughs> and are put upon us as a society, right? You know, now we're expected to suddenly be homeschoolers. Uh, now, I, I think that there's this additional, pr this added pressure suddenly for us to have to be really good at being homeschoolers. Like, fuck that. You know, first of all, fuck that. <laughs> Second of all, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm anxious as fuck. I'm stressed as all hell. I'm, you know, trying to keep it together. I'm forging ahead, but you know, I'm, I've been distracted. I've been distractible. I've gone down rabbit holes and you know, I, I already work from home. I've always worked from home, but not with a 14 year old, you know, lying around. Uh, thank God. Those of you who have toddlers, God bless you. God bless you for real. My friends and I keep texting each other. Can you imagine if you had toddlers right now? So for those of you who do, first of all, God bless you. Secondly, holy shit, like pressure's off, man. Pressure's off. If your kids are doing extra screen time like mine is, it's okay. If your kids are, you know, feeling anxious and wanting to get out of the house, like first of all, we can go, we can leave the house, we can go outside. But, you know, if your kids are doing extra screen, extra screen time and they're not in a condition of optimal learning right now, it's fine. Let it go. Just fucking let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Y'all hate me now, don't you? <laughs> Thanks for the earworm. Oh my God. Okay. So listen, I, if you're in my Facebook group, you know that I've been or for friends on Facebook or anything like that, you'll know that I have been talking today for the last few days, really, about how there have been no guidelines for divorce, people of divorce, especially with um, blended families. And, you know, we're told to stay home and, you know, shelter in place if, if those orders have been uh, made in your city or in your um, state. But nobody's t nobody tells us what does that mean when you've got actually got multiple households. Um, what is a quarantine when you've got a kid that goes back and forth, or multiple kids that go back and forth, or kids that actually spread out are across multiple households? So if you've got a blended family, like so my you know my ex husband his we've got a blended family, right? I'm just one branch of this blended family, um, but the sort of nucleus of it is my ex-husband's house. He's married to a woman who has a son from her previous marriage. So there's, you know, his, his her son's dad's house. Then they've got uh, my son and then my house. And then they've got another son who whose biological mother is a different house and that they're raising together. It's, it's all very complicated. But, you know, you've got three kids spread out across four households. And if you add my mom's, it's five. My son spends a lot of time with my mom. This is a dangerous spread um, for this particular pandemic. 
and the way that it is uh, branching out. So I am trying to, you know, I've written to the governor of California. So someone in the group made a good point from a political science standpoint. The government can't necessarily mandate this, but there, but there can be guidelines. And here, here's something I want to say, right? Is I keep looking for the person to um, develop the guidelines. And I, I'm sort of looking for the grown up in the room. And I'm starting to realize that, uh, oh, I'm I'm the grown up in the room. <laughs> I'm the one that people are looking to, to set the guidelines or to make recommendations. So that's what I'm going to do here. And, and I'm going to do this with the, in, with the caveat that I may not even be able to follow these myself. Um, because my ex-husband, while we are so, you know, amicable and we really work in tandem with a lot of things, one, one of our issues is that I tend to be far more conservative about things and he tends to be far more lax about things. Now, that's not to say that my ex-husband is not in full of high anxiety right now. He sent me a text last night. He said, are you okay? And I said, uh, yeah, why? We're just watching a movie. And he said, I'm very worried about people in my life that are not in my direct eye line. And I said, oh, we're good. We're okay. Are you okay? And he said, no. <laughs> he said, panic comes in waves. <laughs> the tide is high right now. So it's not like I am, it's not like I'm co-parenting with someone who's in denial or going in and like, you know, raging in for spring break in Florida right now, which what the absolute ever loving fuck. There are people who are doing this. I that blew my mind yesterday. I'm so fucking angry about it. But anyway, <laughs> but I digress sort of because it's actually kind of relevant, right? Because this is about what we can control and what we can't control. And at the end of the day, um, I can control what happens in my house. I can have a conversation with my ex-husband about what happens in his house, but I can't control it. And I have to let my son, you know, currently under the current guidelines, I have to, the current guidelines are, by the way, legally speaking, you have got to comply with your orders. So whatever your custody orders are right now, you have got to to comply with them. You do not want to end up in court because you decided that your ex-spouse wasn't being uh, stringent enough in, um, you know, in sort of doomsday preparation for the pandemic. Um, and so you, you didn't really feel that they were doing enough to keep everyone safe. And so you decide not to keep, not to let your kid go to the other parent's house. You're, you're going to get in trouble. Now, I get it. I get it. We're all fucking freaked out. And that sounds like it shouldn't be the case. And like, right, but, you know, we don't have any direct evidence. You can't go to court. Many courts are closed right now. Most of them are closed. So they're only seeing cases um, that are emergencies. And the fact that you're, you don't feel that your ex ex-husband is washing his hands enough is not an emergency, even though it feels like it feels like it is. It's not. And so we have to comply with our orders. We have got to allow our children to see the other parent because you will also, you also put yourself at risk of being accused of alienation. So if you say like daddy's house isn't safe, you can't go there, um, that could be seen as alienation. And you don't want to get into that court battle when courts reopen. Trust me. You don't want people suing for child support back because you didn't, because, you know, they didn't get custody or whatever, right? Um, there's so many ways and reasons that um, you have to comply uh, with your custody order right now. So here's what here's my recommendations. My recommendations are, and again, I said I, I do not think that I'm going to be able to um, do this myself. Um, but in best case scenario, best case scenario, you and your ex are on such good are in good terms are respectful of one another and are equally panicked or equally cautious, right? So I'm more cautious. My ex is less cautious. He's still worried. He still knows that this is very real, but he's just, you know, he's running errands and he's not wearing gloves at the ATM, which are things that I would, I would be doing. I'm wearing gloves wherever I go. But I also have an immunocompromised mother. Best case scenario, you are both equally cautious, you're equally respectful of one another, and you come together 
and you say, this this is dangerous. I think that our child should stay at the house with the with the fewest amount of variables, right? Because the way that I look at it, my ex-husband's house has a fuck ton of variables. My house has almost none. It's me and my son, and the only person I come into consistent contact with right now, other than other than my son, is my mother because I'm bringing her groceries. Or, you know, helping her out with whatever else. My house has the, has the, the, the fewest variables. My ex-husband's house has three kids, four households, like lots of people going in and out. I canceled my cleaning lady. I paid her. One of my recommendations is definitely that you guys, if you, if you are fortunate enough to have someone who comes and cleans your house, that you cancel them and you pay them. We want to continue to pay as many people um, as we possibly can that are in our employ, whether or not they do work for us right now. That w- th- so the top recommendation is that you come together with your ex and are able to have a conversation in which you determine which household has the fewest amount of variables and that your kids stay there. Um, one of the things that's coming out and coming to light about this virus right now is uh, how, how children are carriers. They're far, they're, you know, they may show fewer symptoms, but they're just as in just as much danger of contracting the virus and being sort of silent carriers. So we want to be really cautious about this. You know, I heard people being like, well, you know, they're not symptomatic, so it doesn't matter. Well, yes, it actually fucking does matter because it's not about the symptoms. It's about the virus and carrying the virus. You can be completely asymptomatic and still be and still have the virus and carry the virus. You can be contagious and not be symptomatic right now and next week become symptomatic. This is why kids going back and forth are little carriers of disease. You know, we've known that forever, right? But when it was a cold, it was like, eh, we'll fuck it, we have to suck it up, whatever. You know, this is a deadly disease. So that's the first thing. The other thing that I want to recommend is that you have a conversation in which you keep all financial uh, agreements in place. Mm -hmm. If you decide together that your child or children stay with you, don't demand more child support. Let's not split hairs here right? Let's not, we're, this is about, this is a time to come together as a family and make decisions about what works best for your family and, and, and your children. And again, if you have immunocompromised or older members of your family that are, that are, um, you know, in any part of your family tree, uh, you want to be really, really, really careful. If you're seeing these people, if they're, my mother is, a 78-year-old immunocompromised woman with cancer. Um, she has a chronic form of leukemia. So she, um, you know, she's it, super high risk. So everything that I do, I'm being really extra cautious about my mother because I know that the next jump could be straight to her, right? She's the she's the next sort of jump over. That, I know that doesn't really make any sense, but you know what I mean. She's the next branch. Um, she's closest to me. She's she's in our sphere and she's immunocompromised. So I'm being super, super, super cautious. My ex is obviously very conscious and aware of that, right? We all are, but we have to come together. This is not a time to be splitting hairs. This is not a time for power and control. You know, and I say this under, knowing that the people who are um, able to have these kinds of collaborative communications with their spouses, with their exes, um, are definitely uh, sort of the more privileged among us to be able to do that. Now, if you're in a situation with someone who, if if you're, and I see, and I'm hearing this a lot in my Facebook group, where their people are co-parenting with somebody either in a house. Or not in a house, and we'll get to the uh, people who are still cohabitating um, in a minute. But um, I hear from a lot of people who are like, "My ex is making stupid choices. He's, you know, not being careful. He's not washing his hands. He's doing all these, you know, crazy things, and he's totally not um, being cautious." And I'm freaking the fuck out. And we have immunocompromised members of our family, or we have, you know, older parents or whatever. Um, What can I do? And, you know, the short answer is not a fuck of a lot right now. 
And this is, uh, I hate to say it. I hate to say it because what I want to say is, you know, fight and take a stand and all those things. But unfortunately, you know, courts are closed. You cannot go to court to get some kind of, you know, um, you can't go ex parte on something like this right now because they're not seeing these cases. But that, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a conversation or, by the way, have someone else have the conversation. Because if you are in a combative uh, relationship with an ex who doesn't want to fucking hear it from you because you're always, you know, too cautious or, you know, they're just just not taking this thing. You're taking this thing too seriously or whatever else, whatever (laughs) other ignorant uh, stuff you may be confronted with right now. You know, your best bet is to find someone else to have the conversation. Don't tell them that it's from you, right? But have someone else say, listen, I am I need to get this information across to my ex. He is not listening to me. Does he listen to you? Can you, are you guys talking about this? Maybe you can have like a more reasoned conversation with him about hygiene and, and how he's handling this. And, you know, see if, see if it'll, it'll go that way. There are things that I say to my ex That is because I say them, they're an immediate no. But as soon as he hears it from somebody else, it's, you know, a great idea. So (laughs) that's just, you know, that's just the way it is. And I'm sure that goes that goes for me as well. Right. Like back and forth. I'm sure it goes both ways. So try first try and see if you can have a reasoned conversation. If not, see if you can enroll someone else to have a reasoned conversation and also talk to your children. Talk to your children in age-appropriate ways, in developmentally appropriate ways about the coronavirus. There are about 6,000 um, uh, blog posts out there right now about how to talk to your kids about coronavirus. Google it. Um, and have developmentally appropriate conversations with your kids so that they're responsible for themselves. Most important thing you can do right now is to teach your children to wash their hands while singing happy birthday, if they're little. That is the most, and and to do it all the time and like make a game of it. Every time they touch something, oops, we got to wash our hands, right? And then sing happy birthday. If you empower your kids and you teach your kids and you get them in this habit, they're going to do it when they're at daddy's house or the, the other parent's house. Talk to your kids, train your kids. Let them see all of the things that you're doing at your house and explain to them in developmentally developmentally appropriate terms, like we don't want to scare the shit out of our kids, but we also need them to understand that there's a very bad sickness that's going around and that we have to be super careful so we don't get it. They'll start saying, Daddy, you need to wash your hands, (laughs) you know, (laughs) you don't want to get the sickness depending on who your ex is and what they do, like they, they might start to listen. So for those of you who are stuck in the same house, there's, I think there's two categories here. Um, we have the category of people who are stuck in the same house, um, with someone that they are already in process, right? Like you're like, I want a divorce. You had the conversation, you started the ball rolling and the fucking virus hit. And now you're stuck cohabitating with the person you just said you wanted to divorce and God love you. (laughs) And here's what I want to say. Here's what I said on, I said on a call today, uh, with, uh, my, my group, my rooted group, uh, had our final call today. And the thing that I said that I, the recommendation that I made there was keep taking steps You may not be able to take all the steps that you want to take. You may not be able to take all the steps that you think you should be taking right now. You may not be able to take the steps that you would were this any other time. But it doesn't mean that you can't take steps. A lot of those steps might just be personal development. You know, Um, if you haven't done my program, now is a fucking great time for you to dive into it. My should I stay or should I go program just because it's called should I stay or should I go doesn't mean it's only for those who haven't made the decision. It is also for those who have made the decision and need to want to do the personal development work necessary 
to heal from a fractured relationship and to be able to move on and not repeat the patterns that got them to this particular place. So my program is good for people who are trying to decide and also for those who have already made the decision and need to heal through it. So this is a perfect time. You are homebound, you can't fucking go anywhere, and you need to take some time for yourself. You have got to be doing things for yourself right now. Have to, have to, have to. Uh, this is something that you should be doing for yourself. Taking baby steps, one thing, that, one step every single day towards your process and your separation. Personal development is a huge step in that process. You can also find online mediators. My, my friend Susan Guthrie is an amazing online mediator, but she also has been training hundreds of mediators to take their practices online for the last, uh, I don't know exactly how long, but for a long time now. And needless to say, her business has exploded over the last few weeks. So there are online, there are mediators who um, are practicing fully online now. You can file your entire divorce online at this point. Um, if you're in the state of California, I strongly recommend Hello Divorce. Um, the Hello Divorce process is you will get um, someone to that will walk you through. Erin um, Levine or one of her associates will walk you through your entire divorce online. So if you're in California, that is my top recommendation. If you're out of the state, um, It's Over Easy is now in every state. Um, it's less hands-on. You really have to be in a place where you can just file everything yourself online, but you can do it. My top recommendation, of course, is um, to find someone who will mediate for you online. So you can continue to get through this process. You can separate out your stuff. You can, you know, there are many ways that you can use this time to move towards the divorce. And, you know, I got to say, a lot of you might find um, that you that this helps heal your relationship in terms of communication and collaboration, right? It may not reconcile you, but having this time together might just sort of, you might surrender to the fact that like, well, we're stuck here, right? We may as well make the best of it. Now, for those of you who have been in the should I stay or should I go camp for a long time and are now quarantined with a person that you have probably been wanting to divorce for a good long time, uh, this time period will probably be very, very clarifying for you. And you should also be doing my program right now. No fucking kidding. This is the time. If you haven't done it yet, this is the time. If you've already done it, time to revisit. One of the things that I'm hearing from a lot of women right now is, God damn it. I fucking knew I wanted to do this. I knew I needed to do this like three years ago and I didn't make the move then and now I'm fucking stuck. Now, first of all, you're not stuck long term, but but this may be, you know, we may be in a, in a, this situation for up to 18 months, which I heard the other day and almost made me, I, I'm like, freaked me the fuck out. But, you know, I'm hearing three to six months. I also read 18 months the other day. So who fucking knows, right? Obviously, nobody knows. But the point is, you may be stuck in this situation for a period of time, but it is not forever. Okay, it is not forever. And if you are at that point, if that is crossing your mind right now, if you're like, holy shit, I can't believe I didn't do it because now I'm stuck, then that's probably a very good indicator that when this is done, you are going to want to go. There was a study done that apparently there was a massive spike in divorces in a province in China <laughs> uh, after the coronavirus. <laughs> they all got out of their houses and they all got divorced. Um, now, a bunch of them actually, interestingly enough, got remarried because the divorce process takes something like 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes there. And then like they got divorced and they were like, oh, wait, I didn't mean that. And they and a bunch of them got remarried. <laughs> so 30 to 40 minutes to divorce, y'all. Can you believe that? If you're in the should I stay or should I go camp and you are now quarantined with someone that you really are pretty sure you want to divorce, you can also use this time wisely. You can also, now I'm going to interrupt this for, I'm going to say one thing really important. If you are in any, if you are in an abusive relationship and you are quarantined with an abuser, particularly a physical abuser, but 
not only because emotional and psychological abuse can have, you know, sometimes worse effects, actually. Um, But if you are quarantined with an abuser, I want you to write this minute. I want you to stop this podcast. I want you to call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. That's 1-800-799-7233. I want you to go into a closet and I want you to make that call and tell them that you are quarantined with an abuser and you are going to f- create uh, a plan to get you out because victims of domestic violence right now are in huge danger of being quarantined with an abuser. This is this is like an abuser's dream to have complete power and control. And you are in tremendous danger. Tremendous. I cannot, cannot stress this enough. If you are in an abusive uh, relationship and you are quarantined with an abuser, you are in danger. Um, So please, please, please call the domestic violence hotline. Again, I'm going to give you the number 1-800-799-7233. If you are not in grave danger, if you're not in an abusive situation, you're just quarantined with someone who drives you batshit crazy, take this time. Take this time to do my program to make make a plan. You're in your house, right? Make a plan. Get a notebook. Start writing things down. Make lists of the things that you know that you, you're going to want to take. Um, get your finances in order. Take this time to, to copy bank records. Take this time to um, make sure you have access to all your accounts. Check all your balances. Take this time to get to, to as information gathering. This is the best use of this time for everyone is information gathering, cleaning house. You know, we everyone's talking about cleaning their houses and stuff like that or decluttering and all of that stuff. Declutter your bank accounts, like <laughs> declutter your bank accounts because they're so messy. But, you know, mine is. Mine's like, uh, you know, I'm taking I'm going to take some time to actually organize. I'm doing my taxes and I'm reorganizing my bank accounts and making sure that I, you know, so the, just sort of just focus on your money. Focus on your money house for for a while while you're in this um in this thing. And what I am really hoping to be able to do is I would like to, I posted this morning that I I really want our elected officials and leaders to come up with some official guidelines and mandates around how people, how divorced people, uh, people who are co-parenting across multiple households uh, should be doing this. Like if they do a shelter in place, what does that mean? What does that mean for us? We need to know what to do. We need to know what is safe. And until we get government guidelines or official, because, you know, here's the deal. If it's a government mandate, your ex can't fucking fight with you about it. (laughs) Right. I have made my recommendations clear and you can spread the word (laughs) about this and, you know, we'll just have to see how it goes and we're just going to keep on keeping on. Um, So this is, as you know, has been therapy week on the Divorce Survival Guide podcast, therapy month, sorry, therapy month on the Divorce Survival Guide podcast. But next week we have our final episode um, with Gwyn Ramondi on trauma. So please make sure that you uh, stick around for that and or come back next week for that. (laughs) And that will conclude therapy month. And I think next month we start our two month sex series. Is that right? I don't have it on my I don't have it in front of me, but that should be exciting and fun. And if you're if you're stuck at home and you guys are having sex, use protection. We're going to have a big baby boom come December. So for God's sake, don't have another baby. My son is my son walked in the room, you guys. And he was like, what? Why are you talking about sex? <laughs> Podcasting from home. But for God's sake, do not have another baby with someone that you think you want to divorce. <laughs> That's all for now. Over and out. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Divorce Survival Guide podcast. If you like what you hear, head on over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in and leave me a review. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at The Divorce Survival Guide. I'll see you next time. And until then, remember, you, my love, 
deserve to be happy.